Another way that you can repair a thinning lock is to use human hair. So this is 100% human hair, or they say it is, I don't know. I can't verify that, but they say it's 100% human hair. So depending on how thick your locks are, if you have traditional locks, larger locks, micro locks, you need to take an appropriate section of hair because you don't wanna take a huge amount if you have thin locks like me. You take a tiny amount of hair, of the human hair, and wherever that thin part is, you kind of just go ahead and wrap this extension hair around that part where it's thinning. And then in the same way that you would do if it was just your regular hair, you do the same thing. You go in and you crochet. And as you're crocheting and going back and forth in this movement, okay? Again, you're going up and down, you're going diagonal, you're going diagonal this way, diagonal that way. Every way that you can get this needle to go, you're twisting as you're going along, okay? You're twisting so that way you're pulling hairs in from all different sides. This hair is going to be intertwined in your lock. Now, if we are moving on to how to close up your loose ends, if you're wanting to close up your ends, which I do not, so again, I'm not going to fully do this on my lock, but I will show y'all what you would do. Yeah, some of these have already started closing up and not about that curly Q life on the end. But in the same way that you crochet up at the top or the, the other, the same method that I've showed you for anything else, you can simply go in, let's say I wanted to turn this curly Q and I could, I personally would bend it up just a little bit just so that there's a foundation, but you don't have to, you can just crochet as is, but you go in and you crochet it. Do I wanna, do I wanna sacrifice a lock for y'all just to show you? That's how much I love y'all flockers. I'm gonna sacrifice a lot. All right, so you see, look, we got curly Q. It's not really locking at the end yet. One day it will, but all right. So I'm literally just, I've taken it and I'm folding it up the end. All right, just like that. And then I'm going to go in just the way that I've been telling y'all and I'm crocheting the end of my lock, okay? And in the same way, you're pulling from the bottom, you're pulling from sideways, the top. And it's hard to tell again, because my lock is so small, but I am rotating my fingers as I go along. Just because, like I said, you want to make sure that you're constantly rotating your fingers so that one, you're giving it a cylindrical kind of like, as you do it, you're keeping the hairs. I don't know how to explain it y'all, but it keeps the cylindrical form when you roll your lock as you're crocheting it. I just barely did it. I didn't do it a ton, but if I kept at it, you see that? I don't know how well, because in the viewfinder, I can't see. But when I look at it, I can see that at the end, we're already, it's tightening, and it's not that, that soft coil that it was before, okay? So, again, whether you have traditional locks, or you have thinner, not thinner, smaller micro lock, sister locks, all right? I don't need to get this close because I have a thing. People with micro locks and sister locks, I don't know that anybody's gonna have the patience to go through one by one and do this to all of their locks. But if you have thicker traditional locks, larger locks, I could definitely see you going in and doing this method to go ahead and lock up the ends. If you found this video helpful or insightful at all, make sure to hit that like button as it truly helps the channel and helps me to know what type of videos y'all are enjoying. And also hit that subscribe button so that you can join the vlog and know when I put out new videos, put out new content. And while you're here, watch some of the other videos that have popped up. I will see you there.